Hello everybody. Welcome to Learning Techniques. Heman this side. Today we are going to deploy multiple Ansible versions on a single control node. To understand the detailed requirement and benefits, you can refer our blog. The link is given in the description. So starting with, we need to install Python. Well, this is on your choice, which Python version you want to install. Uh, we are going to install both two and three. So this is the RHL 8 server. So we will be using the DNF utility to install the packages. It, it works simply like yum. So I'm just picking the Python 3 pip, Python 3 virtual env, and the Python 2 pip. Those already have a requirement of Python, so they will install the required Python versions itself. Okay, so while installing it, you can see it's uh, deploying the respective Python versions itself. As Python is installed, let's verify uh, whether we have required Python installed or not. Python 2 is there and Python 3 is there. So once it's installed, uh, we have verified the versions itself. So I have created a dedicated mount point for this activity. So let's create one more directory over here. The mount point is obd python. So we'll be using this for the activity. I have created one, uh, my bad. I have created one other directory over here. Ansible directory itself is there. Okay, um, so the directory is there. The first thing we have to create here is the virtual environment. One thing here is we will be covering a bit less in the video. As there's no point in repeating the same thing again and again. So my strong recommendation is to check out the blog for more details. Python is providing two utilities here to create a virtual environment. The one is virtual environment command itself that came with the Python 3 IP virtual env package. And second is a module venv. It's a Python 3 based module. If you ask my personal choice, I prefer virtual environment more because it helps me to create an environment with Python 2 and Python 3 both. While VNV is only a Python 3 based utility. Let's see exactly what I'm trying to say. First, trying to create a command through virtual env using Python 2. The command is pretty simple. Just virtual env is the command. Hyphen p, the Python version which you want to use in the directory structure you want to create. It will itself create a directory structure named 2.4.0. Okay, so the also installing some required tools in the directory. Okay, uh, let's create one more directory structure through Python 3 and see if it works. Yes, so it's creating directory structure through both Python 2 and Python 3. Um, one correction I want to say, it's not a directory structure, it's like a skeleton for your environment. So, now the second thing which I told was a VENV module. We can use VENV module as well. It's pretty easy to create an environment. The command is, you just give a Python version hyphen M, the module name, the VENV module, and the directory structure or the environment you want to create. Let's see if it helps us with creating an environment for Python 2 as well. We have Python 2.7 installed in our system. So let's try to create uh, one other environment. Right. 2.7 don't have any VENV module, so that's fine. Let's see what we have in uh, the OPT Python Ansible now we have. So it has created three structures. Why I was saying it was a skeleton, let's see do a ls over this or any of the directory you will see a complete skeleton structure that would be required to create an environment and activate an environment for you okay so let's uh, first try to log into any of the environment so to log into any of the environment you have to use source command source com oh, my bad sorry sorry i picked a bit file a wrong file source directory structure path and your directory structure name. Inside that, there's a bin. 
and uh, an activate command is there that will activate your environment for you. So you can see your environment is activated. If you run a Python, which Python command over here, uh, not which, um, better thing is Python, I see. Let me show you the which Python version it's using for this execution. So a skeleton is created. Now let's uh, install the required Ansible version through pip. As we see before, the sorry for the pip is already installed by it. So create a pip. Ansible version through pip. It gave you a warning that you are using a dep depreciated version as Python two is going to end soon. So that's fine for us. Now let's see. Is our Ansible installed? Yes, the Ansible is installed with the correct required version. There is no config file because this is a virtual environment. These are isolated environments, so we have to use our own files. It will give you the Python version which it is using, and the other things, the executable location and the Python module location, etc. Now, to log out from this environment, you can simply give a command deactivate. And it will bring you to the base system. So let's create one more environment for our reference so that it will be easier for us to compare and test things later. Okay, I have activated one more environment 2.9.0. Just update uh, if the tools are not updated yet. Okay, let's update it. Now uh, install the required version of Ansible. Okay, Ansible is successfully installed. So let's uh, see. Command you can skip if you want. Command is same. So let's log out from the environment. Now we have two environments ready. So we can use and uh, deploy the playbooks and see the differences. So let's quickly create an inventory and perform a key transfer and see exactly if playbooks are working as expected. And uh, I'm using a loop feature, which was introduced in Ansible version 2.5. So that's why I've created two environments, 2.4 and 2.9, that we can verify whether my Ansible playbook is working fine on both environments or not. But before that, it will be pretty tough if we have to give a complete manual command every time with a complete path to switch the environments. So let's create a short alias for it so that it will be helpful for us. I have already created an alias option. Let me run again. So we have alias. Uh, what are the environments name? Python Ansible. Okay, we have three environment names. Let's do Ansible activate 2.4.4. And cool, it activated me the environment. Let's switch me to the environment. You don't have to type the complete command again. Oh, sorry. So in a similar way, we can give another environment name and uh, it will switch me to this environment. That's fine. Okay, so let's create a simple playbook that will uh, deploy the things for us. Before that, uh, let me create a custom inventory. So. Okay, the inventory will be any directory or inventory file in the current area. We have a file inventory over here as well. T node one, T node two, and T node three. The three machines which I'm producing for my the requirements. 
is current working directory we are working here on the root so there is no point in keeping these files over here so inventory and cfg to at this location so pt python and support okay so let's switch to the location so that there will be no confusion we have two files as well. Um, for better visibility, you can put in the directory as well. It's all your choice. Now, perform a let's set up a passwordless key setup for root. This is not a good practice. You should use a proper key setup for a proper user, which you trust. But that's fine since we are using in the lab. So let me get the passwords of these machines. Now let me see if I'm able to connect to my machines. Ansible, the inventory path is fine. Uh, iPhone M. Let's use simple ping module to see if I'm able to connect to my machines. That's a Python 2 warning, that's fine. So yes, I'm able to connect cleanly, that's fine. So let's create a simple playbook here. To add some extra packages using a loop parameter. I have created an uh, already created a playbook, save our time. So now the thing is, previously, uh, those who worked on previous versions. Uh, there was an item called with items or uh, the with and the lookup parameter which you will be using with the item field to provide the required values but from 2.5 onwards they have introduced a parameter called loop so i simply use a loop with a variable it's a simple playbook uh, host it will use on all the hosts of the inventory become yes use the pseudo privileges variables the variable i call this list of packages and install all those packages then you have a simple task to perform that deploy additional parameters. How you will perform the task, you have to use a YUM module for that and the which package is named that I'm providing from the list, which is given here. The state should be present. Let's see whether my 2.4 environment will be able to take this loop or not. Use simple command and simple playbook. Uh, sorry, this spelling is wrong, but let's see. It's trying to connect to the host, gathering the facts, but it failed because it is not able to find the lookup name list of packages. Simple words, it's not able to understand exactly what that loop parameter is trying to provide. Let's test the same playbook using the 3.2.9 environment. Okay, that's Ansible activate to Now the thing is, do I need to create the same files again or are those files specific to the disk? Because if it's uh, environment specific files, if I am logging to environment and creating the files and if they are staying only locally, then it will be a tough situation. Let's see what I can see. The good thing is the files are local to the disk, not to the environments, what you are creating. So you can simply use them. So my connection is already there. The keys are already set up for the user. So let's see and try to deploy the playbook. Now it's using Ansible 2.9 for its deployment. This time it's not giving me any errors. This may take some time because it all depends on the bandwidth which we are receiving. So I'm also going to deploy the packages. It may take some time because of dependencies as well. So but the good thing here is the same playbook works with the new environment because it identified the 
extra variable introduced, extra feature introduced in that release. Okay, that's good. We are good. The packages are deployed. We can, uh, if you want, we can run an ad hoc command to see if I'm able to see those packages installed and sub LMT node. Node name hyphen m shell hyphen a just execute a simple RPM query sorry. on uh, any of those installed packages. So um, see whether it worked or not. My bad, I just gave wrong node name which is not existent. Okay, the command is still wrong. And nobody warned me about that. Yes, so it, uh, it's a web shade warning that I can use yum or dnf to view the versions. That's fine. The good thing is, it gave me the node, it gave a status of change, and its path is not failed. That means it is able to find those uh, provide RPMs. Thank you for watching this. This is Heman Zangwar and you are watching learning techniques videos. Thank you.